These are the Lion Safari UT. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries and they are super cheap for what you get. So I hope they work as advertised. And what's so cool about these is that you can do a continuous discharge current of 150 amps. Pretty much all the other ones on the market can only do 100 amps at this size. We have some terminal screws. This thing is tiny and lightweight. They must be using aluminum case prismatic cells. And for a quick comparison, this thing is 30 pounds and this one's 21 pounds. That's crazy. And these handles are super sweet. And they actually sent out two of them so we can use them as a 24 volt battery system. They're very unique though. There is not a single battery that I've seen that has this case or any of this. This is very different. We're charging this thing up and we're gonna do a capacity test. And this is advertised at 1200 watt hours. So we're gonna use an inverter and we're gonna pull 100 amps. So it should be able to supply that for an hour. And we're gonna test with this. And now the battery is fully charged. So now we need to crank 100 amps. Uh oh. Well that sucks, it only did a thousand. Come on, man. Dang, I guess that's it, you guys. Only one kilowatt hour, and it says on the battery, 1,200 watt hours. It's not turned back on. That's it. After testing this twice, this is not a 1200 watt hour battery. It says 1200 watt hours on here. It is a thousand watt hour battery. I do not like when battery manufacturers don't put the actual accurate specs because I looked up the specific energy of lithium iron phosphate or the watt hours per kilogram. If you take 21 pounds, you will get like a thousand watt hours with the case included and everything. So I think it's pretty much impossible to have a 1200 or even a 1300 watt hour lithium iron phosphate at 21 pounds. It's physically impossible to do that. I also just asked the company about their lifetime warranty. And some people were like, oh, lifetime warranty. They thought that that really means forever. Because I know some of those lifetime warranties only cover the lifetime of the product and not your actual life. And I was like, is there a time constraint or what is this? And they said it's 3,500 charge cycles or 80% capacity. So whether it takes, you know, 10 years or five years or whatever, it doesn't matter. They guarantee that you'll get 3,500 charge cycles. And I asked them, I was like, how do you tell how many charge cycles you have? And they said that the BMS has a charge cycle counter and they use that in the capacity to determine if there's an actual failure. So what can we say about this battery? It is nice that it has this battery monitor on here. It is very lightweight, even for a thousand watt hours. And I'm about to take this apart and find out what cells they're using. But I would still say that there are better options on the market at this price point. They say that they are gonna be building a bigger battery with 1300 watt hours. And they said that will be the true capacity. But I personally feel let down when I see 1200 watt hours on the battery. And then it gives me a thousand watt hours. I do not feel like that's fair, but I still understand that it's a good product and it's still an option, but it's the same price as other options on the market. So if you need a small battery that has high discharge, because this has a better discharge rate, I mean, this thing can push 150 amps at 12 volts. That's an 1800 watt inverter with this tiny battery. So I think van life people could benefit from that and being able to check the state of charge by just pressing this button. There are a lot of people that could still use this instead of a battle board. But for me personally, I would probably still go with the Battleborn, especially because they have a warranty that's for years and not charge cycle count. And how can we trust the charge cycle counter on the BMS if it fails? Um, and they could, you know, test the capacity of the raw cells. But I don't know. I think that's a little bit iffy. I think there should be a better way. I like Battleborns like it's for a certain amount of years because you have to also factor in calendar aging. So what if your battery just fails because it's old? Um, you need to take that into account as well. So yeah, let's take this battery apart and see what's inside. Oh, it's still hot because we did that test. So this will be cool. Oh, <laughs> look how tiny it is. So we have four prismatic cells and you can see labeled on them 90 amp hours at 3.2 volts. And that's 288 watt hours each. 
We should be getting 1,152 max, but I'm guessing the BMS is cutting it off. There is quite a bit of heat generated on even these bus bars. I think these should be copper. I mean, I have a lot of bus bars and when I do these tests, they don't get this warm. The BMS looks really nice though. It has a huge heat sink on there. So I'm guessing the capacity we're getting is because the BMS cuts it off. So theoretically, if you push these cells to the limit, they should push almost 1200 watt hours, but in practice, absolutely not. Honestly, I think that these should be rated at 80 amp hours. I don't think it should be even 90 amp hours considering my test results. These are really cool cells though. They're aluminum case and that's why they're so light. But yeah, that makes a lot more sense after opening this up now. And these cables they use for the battery are really thick. I mean, they're using four. These are eight gauge, so they definitely did a good job in that sense. Also, I think they test individual cell capacity. That's what they told me. But I don't think they're testing with the BMS. I think that's why we have different numbers. They said that they get, usually get 1,177, but that's when they test the individual cells for all four of them combined. But if you add the BMS in, you are not getting that. You are getting 1,000 watt hours and that's it. These results are not impressive. I mean, look at the battery. It says 1,200 watt hours. We got 1,000. I do like prismatic cells though, and the 150 amp continuous is awesome. And the wires they connect to the BMS, you could easily pull 150 amps with this. So if you want a small battery for like a van and you need to power a large inverter, these would work really well. But for everything else, I'd probably get maybe a Battleborn because of the warranty. If I was being cheap and I love being cheap, I would get the Ruxu and get low temp cut off with a Victron because that's like the cheapest way to do it. It's 600 bucks for a 100 amp hour battery. I mean, you cannot beat that six hundred dollars and you get 1200 watt hours that is it's almost cheaper than building it yourself that's crazy and i think that that's false advertising it should be pulling 1200 watt hours at that c rate and i practically overcharge these things when i do these capacity tests i got this thing the 14.8 volts it should be giving me 1200 watt hours and if you guys disagree with anything that I just said and you have better results, please tell me. Post a video in the comment section below and I will retest it or whatever. I'm getting really good at these tests though and I get the same numbers every time. So I hope you guys found this video useful. I will talk to you later. Also, there's a coupon code instead of $1,000 MSRP. These are $800 MSRP. But like I said, again, it's the same cost as a Battleborn overall. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later and see ya. Bye.